In this video, I'm going to share how I approach creating this portrait full of pink tones titled A Feeling of Blush. Stick around to the end of this video to see more of the process that went into creating this painting. And with that being said, let's roll the intro and jump right into this. Welcome to episode number 10 of the painting process. My name is Alex Hess, and in this episode, we'll be looking at how I approached painting this portrait titled A Feeling of Blush. When I started to conceptualize this portrait, I'd first thought of the overall theme, this blushing theme, and then ultimately how to capture that within a portrait. I wanted this portrait full of pinks, magentas, and crimsons in a way that was eye-catching. And I have to say, this painting ended exactly where I'd originally conceived in my mind. I've always been most attracted to figurative and portraiture painting. And in this painting, I wanted to test some new applications, and I think it worked beautifully. And before we start, if you're new to my channel, the goal of this series, The Painting Process, is for me to share footage and insiders on my process to achieving sophisticated realism using acrylic paints. However, it's not limited to. So if you're an oil painter, a lot of the same techniques and process can be applied similarly. If you like this type of content, don't forget to give this channel a, sub a subscribe. And you can always find me on social media at alexhess underscore artist. And now let's get started looking at the process that went into creating this portrait. So for this painting, my palette will consist of titanium white, yellow ochre, quinacridone magenta, alizarian crimson, raw umber, ultramarine blue, and lastly carbon black. Now to start this painting out, with this video I'm showing directly after the underpainting was complete. And to do this underpainting that you see here, it was just a combination of raw umber and titanium white. There was no mixtures or any in between. It was just working that paint up thinly to create that underpainting. And really the key thought with this painting was basically eliminating a lot of the cadmium red and switching it to quinacridone magenta or alizarian crimson and really create those pink blushing tones that I associate with the emotion. And a key thing to always keep in mind if you're mixing with these colors is quinacridone magenta is much better for the flesh because it's not nearly as a condensed pigment as the alizarian crimson but each one has its unique feature, especially for creating dynamic color in the painting. I call this the add and subtract in a sense because I made sure to do this hair in the same sitting as the background. That way the canvas is still wet and the paint, you can still move around. So I overfilled the background with those pink tones into the hair and then I'll continue to push the hair back out again. And by having that wet on wet, it'll allow me to play around with the edges and really create some of those single strand of hair that you'll see. And this model had pretty dark hair. So for the most part with hair this dark, it's pretty much a silhouette in terms of initially starting the hair because you'll be able to continue to put in some of those mid-tones during this layer. But then what really gives the dimensionality is those highlights. 
And I had put a glaze directly on top of the underpainting, and that's what you see with those pink hues here to start this off. But at this point, I'm just blocking in the initial folds within the fabric. And I'm thinking about this in terms of not only stroke, but how the pinks will shift in the shadows versus the highlights. So for this piece, the shadows have a bit more cool tones, which is some of that Alizarian crimson. But then in the warmer tones, it's a bit more of the quinacridone magenta. And some people really struggle with folds in, fa in fabric, but I think this is a great way to think about value and to really understand just overall form. Because it, with fabric and drapery, you really get these deep folds with shadows, but then the bright highlights on the little glint of light onto the fabric. And this portrait was really all about creating that color, that analogous color throughout the entire painting. So a lot of those same hues that I used in the background, I'm using for the model's torso in the fabric. Now it's time to start with the flesh. And a nice thing with keeping your underpainting somewhat tight, especially for portraits, is by putting in this thin glaze, which isn't, I'm not using medium here. This is just straight up thinned, thinned down flesh tones that I'm just applying to start the portrait out. Is a lot of those values from the underpainting, you'll be able to work directly in even with just a flat glaze across the painting. And even at this point, with it, with the flesh looking pretty unrefined, you still understand where your values are, where the deep shadows and the eyes and makeup are. And I think that's why it's key to do an underpainting for a portrait, especially. And with skin tones, it's always a matter of what your light source is, because for this painting especially, it's like you have these super bright saturated pinks in the background and then into the foreground. So when I go about thinking about flesh tones, I start thinking I need to bring in some more of those pinks into the overall flesh. That's why when starting out, people often think like if there's one particular flesh tone recipe and the answer to that, generally speaking, is no, because it's all about the light source, and that's what's really going to control this, the color of the flesh tones. And as you can see, I'm I'm simplifying the values in the form within this portrait to start because I think it's a good way to understand the planes of the face and to see where those forms are curving over, such as the cheek into the jaw. By simplifying that and putting, letting some of those mid-tones develop throughout the painting, I think it's a good way to create accurate values for a portrait. And portraits are always a good test for artists because it's something that as humans you can almost instantaneously understand if something looks wrong. So even at this point I'm conscious that certain forms or values might not be 100% correct, but 
it's something just to continue to think about as the painting keeps developing. Because a painting pretty much is like, it's like a, it's like a site exam or something. As the painting continues to build, the focus gets sharper. As in the values get more accurate, the dimensionality starts coming out more, and the overall painting starts giving that realism and that convincing form. I wanted to give a quick note on my thoughts behind creating this portrait. All artists know a portrait is always a great test of any artist's ability. As humans, we have the ability to instantly recognize when something is off on a face, even if it's only by a fraction. For this portrait, I wanted to really capture the blushing colors such as the pinks, magentas, and crimsons, and reds in a saturated but cohesive way. This was my way of capturing the emotion and overall theme of blush in this portrait. And now let's see the final layers of this painting and the glazing bring this all to life. And now at this point into the painting, I'm starting to really think about some of those more subtle highlights and some of the more subtle shifts in hue. And when I say shifts in hue is to really create dynamic within color, you want to play off of cools and warms. And you want some of those cool tones to show through as and some of those warm tones. And that creates more dynamic in the overall color of the painting. And I'll just continue to work this portrait and really try to develop those values and really give that essence of a captivating, eye-catching portrait. I wanted to say thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back in a prompt manner. And if you like this type of content, show an artist some support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. I'll try to keep posting new video content onto YouTube, but you can always see more of my work at alex hescom or social media at Alex Hess underscore artist. I hope to see you guys in the next video, and until then, goodbye.